no motive to sell the house. So now, what's the ticking time bomb? A few things. One, Jerome Powell is trying to increase rates, hoping, hoping unemployment increases, because that's what we need. They need the unemployment to increase. It's not moving. It's still 3.7, 3.5, 3.8, 3.9. It's not moving. It's right there. Okay, so either we need unemployment to go up or we need people to run out of money. If people run out of money and they're stressed out, guess what they, they do? They're going to sell the house. So today, numbers came out saying it's 55% more cheaper to rent than buy. This is the highest we've had ever. Wow. It's 55% cheaper to rent than to buy today. This is not a buying season. This is a renting season, okay? This is what Wall Street Journal, many of these other articles will talk about. Okay, meanwhile, the economy's growing. The economy's going up. Dow Jones, oh, it's killing it. Based on seven companies, Magnificent Seven, and you know who these Magnificent Seven companies are. NVIDIA, you got these Facebooks, the Amazons, the Apples, these seven companies that are preventing the company from country, uh, the market from having a crash. Then while all this stuff is taking place, um, Powell now is dealing with a war. He's afraid. He wants to raise the rates a quarter, but due to the war that took place in Israel, he doesn't. And then data shows, which is by far the most interesting data to answer your question here, is how much after these five situations where we've raised the rates multiple times in a span, this being the shortest uh, in the most condensed time frame, how long does it typically save? Is there a formula of when recession comes, if at all? Here's what they realize. Recession usually comes, on average, 11 months after the last month they raise the rates. So what does this mean? If Powell's no longer going to raise the rates, and the last time they raised the rates was September, let's just say, that means recession is going to come when? Not October. So you got October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, August of next year, three months before election. That's if it follows the trends of the last five times when they raised interest rates. Mm -hmm. So how did I start off the story? I talked about the doctor that has met 4,000 different patients in the 420. You're kind of going through this. The problem of everything I just told you <laughs> could be completely wrong because there's a fifth when the doctor says, I've never seen this before. Right. So we've never seen current climate, current climate before for us to be able to put it and say, well, according to this and according to that, we've never had this situation before. And yeah, this is exactly what's happening right now around our global economy. This is unprecedented times. Um, it is a completely different environment versus pretty much any recession, any significant crisis in the past. But all of the warning signs are there. Yet everyone has been trying to time this. You've been hearing about how this is going to collapse. That's going to collapse. This is a crisis. That's a crisis. But nothing has happened. And everyone's sitting there wondering why, what's going on, especially if you go back to 2023, where we did start to see banks go belly up. And at this current moment in time, we now are starting to see inflation coming back in a big way. We also have debt spiraling out of control. Some would argue that it has been for years now. Um, and everyone's just like, where are we headed? And in this video, I want to actually address that. So welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Nick. For those that are new to the channel, hopefully by the end of this video, you do become a subscriber. Let's take a quick look at Zillow because now Zillow is telling you guys the truth. Home buyers need to earn $47,000 more than in 2020. That's how significant things have changed. The income needed to comfortably afford a home is up 80% since 2020. We're talking about four years now while median income has risen 23% in that time. So nothing is keeping pace with the cost of living. And this is very unsustainable. Now also, housing costs have soared over the past four years. We actually have here that home values have risen 42.4% in that time, with a typical US home now worth about $343,000. Now again, as we look at this, right, some will argue, all right, well, the housing market is so strong. The housing market is so strong or, oh, stocks are at all time highs. So that means stocks are, you know, very strong. The economy is very strong. But what if I told you that the reason why everything around us is surging in, you know, cost and in value, um, whether you look at, you know, cost of goods or if you look at the value of stocks and real estate is because the dollar itself is 
dropping significantly in purchasing power and value. Because this is exactly what happens when we start to see things surging. You see a weaker fiat currency. And right now, the dollar is becoming very weak. And even over here, we have buyers need a $127,000 down payment to afford a typical mortgage payment. Let me ask you this. How many have $127,000 just you know piled away? I would argue it's slim to none. And we actually have here that a median income household would need to put 35.4% down to afford the payments on a typical U.S. home. A typical home is affordable to a median income household with 20% down or less in 10 of the 50 biggest U.S. markets. 43% of last year's home buyers used a gift from family or friends to help with their down payment. And also, home availability right now is also very significantly impacted because as we look at, you know, mortgage rates, for an example, nobody wants to give up their mortgage rates from even just a couple years back. So as we look at this, right, the real estate market is starting to slow. And it's because of how expensive it actually is. And by the way, here's July of this year, a $1 million starter home is the norm in 237 cities. And this is because of the housing shortage. And the housing shortage has worsened because, like I said, nobody wants to give up their you know cheap mortgage rates. So as we look at what's going on here, right, real estate is a very big market to focus on because a lot of the loans around real estate are tied right back to banks that actually don't have strong liquidity. Outside of just you know the retail real estate market, we also look at commercial real estate, which is one of the biggest warning signs for big banks, because it's actually putting hundreds of banks at risk. And once we do start to see commercial real estate slide, all of a sudden, all of those banks go bust. And it's a contagion effect that bleeds into almost everything around finance, which starts pushing the economy even lower, it starts to crash things, things start to break. And it just is a snowball effect. I also want to play this clip real quick from Patrick Bet David, listen closely. I was gonna come here, uh, like I told you earlier when we were talking, my bigger fear is a reverse market crash, which Venezuela just went through, which all of a sudden, the rates get lowered and Dow and S&P goes, and Dow goes from 33, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, just goes vroom. Is that just the dollar losing its purchasing power? Yes, exactly. That's what happens. The more we're printing, like, uh, uh, for example, a Michael Jordan um, card uh, years ago, a BGS nine and a half, sold for $78,000. I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. But then all of a sudden, all of these boxes kept entering the marketplace of 1986 Fleer. Mm. So guys started buying these things and they were sending more to get graded at Beckett and PSA. The more they got cards graded, that $78,000 card, BGS 9.5, became a $60,000 card, $50,000 wow. card, $40,000 card, $30,000 card. You can probably buy BGS 9.5 today for $20,000, $25,000, okay? So the inventory increases the more we print money. The more you print dollars and it's more accessible, the less it's value, the less it's worth. So these are some things that's going on uh, today uh, so, uh, you know, like I, you, you sit there and you're like, okay, so does this mean guys are not going to make a lot of money? No, no. You're going to see the first trillionaire in the next 24 months because none of this is going to affect the guys at the top. None of it. This printing money, every time they print money, the guys at the top make more money. Every, if there's anybody that should be against printing money, it's low and middle income families. If there's anybody that should be against printing money, it's them. If there's anybody that's for printing money, guess who it is? The guys at the top. Why? Because the poor in middle America can't keep money. They spend it. And when they spend it, what do they buy? A product owned by somebody in the S&P 500 or other people who have businesses. Money flows up. They can keep printing money all they want. So when low and middle income families are like, look at these guys. All they care about is themselves. Let that bill pass for $2.7 trillion. You simply look at them and you say, you have no clue how money works. You have no idea how money works. Now, guess what? Let's print $10 trillion. The rich are okay with it. You ain't going to get the rich complaining about printing $10 trillion or $5 trillion. BlackRock's going to be like, all right, cool. 
we're at eight to ten trillion dollars of money in our ETFs, and we're buying up a bunch of different companies. We're buying up all these properties today. Right now, it's going to be nothing. But in the next few years, you have to go through us, and we dictate the market, and we're going to own it all. And what are you going to do about it? You know, this, th these are these are a lot of different moving parts that is going on to me. And again, for me, um, the the idea of Middle America not being able to make the money they need to make to be able to afford a house, send their kids to school, live in a nice place, enjoy some of their dreams, maybe not the biggest ones, but some of their dreams are going to become a reality. Middle America is getting smaller and smaller and smaller every single time we print money. And yet, yeah, this is exactly what I mean, right? This is a reverse crash where the dollar is essentially becoming, it's similar to like the currency debasements, right? It's losing its purchasing power. It's starting to fall. And that's where we start to see housing becoming so unaffordable. It's ridiculous. We also have um, food also um, increasing in cost, which I will get to here in a second. But also what he does say, right? Like the rich will continue to get richer and the poor will continue to get poorer. It's just like this going back to May. I'm sure that you guys probably heard about this already, but I want to bring this back up because this is cumulative pandemic era excess savings. Okay, shocking stat of the day, 2.1 trillion of excess savings have been wiped out of the US economy since August of 2021. Guys, this is very significant. Savings are getting drained. We now have consumer debt skyrocketing to historical all-time highs. At the same exact time that everyone is under the impression that the economy is bouncing back, that the economy is strong. This is not true. From March of 2020 until August of 2021, 2.1 trillion in excess savings were built up after 4 trillion of stimulus. Since then, U.S. households have depleted these savings at a pace of $70 billion per month down to a negative $72 billion in March of 2024. That's right, negative $72 billion. At the same time, U.S. credit card debt has risen by $330 billion to a record $1.1 trillion. Meanwhile, savings rates in the U.S. declined from 3.5% in February to 3.2% in March, the lowest since November of 2022. Savings are now considered a luxury. And what's even crazier about this is, like I said, food is now increasing in cost. Global food prices rose 2.1% year over year in September, the most in 18 months. The United Nations Food and Agriculture World Food Price Index also increased 3.0% in September, posting its largest month over month jump since March of 2022. This has been driven by a 10.4% year over year surge in sugar prices, followed by meat at a 4.8% increase. Vegetable oil prices are, uh, have also soared by 4.6% and reached their highest level since early 2023. Global food prices are now 21.4% higher than they were in January of 2020. Declining food affordability is a major problem. And yes, all of this is it's a plan by the, the elites to make sure that the poor stay poor, that you want to wipe out the middle class. They already in, uh, they're already in you know, the process of doing so. And this is exactly the repeat of almost every single recession, every single major collapse. The rich will get richer. The poor will stay poor or even get poorer. And this is exactly what they want. This is their plan. This is what they have been planning for so long. And guess what's next? You probably already guessed it. They want to push the CBDCs. They want to push the digital IDs. They want to push the control mechanisms. And uh, this is you know, where we really kind of get to, where they wipe out savings. They wipe out individuals. They make sure that they don't have enough to get by. So all of a sudden, hey, guess what? We have uh, some universal basic income for you that we're going to give you, you know, sixteen hundred dollars a month to start, or we'll give you, you know, three thousand dollars a month. But after six months, we'll, you know, drop it down to fifteen hundred or whatever. Um, but also the value, right? They'll offer it at a, you know, increased rate. Say for so, hey, guess what? We'll give you it for a dollar twenty-five. 
But after, you know, six months, it will drop down to a dollar. Or, you know, after 12 months, it will drop down to 50 cents. And it will just continue to lose its value um, so that you're, you know, completely reliant upon the government so that they have complete and utter control over you. This is all a process. This is very significant to focus on. This is worse than a recession, and uh, you need to be aware of this. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. And with that being said, guys, this has been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.